cache is organized in a hierarchical fashion. It consists of one or more number of sets, and each cache set consists of one or more number of cache lines. Each cache line contains certain number of bytes, for example, 64 bytes on modern Intel and AMD CPUs, valid bit, and tag bits. Therefore, total cache size is the number of sets times number of cache lines per set times number of bytes in each cache line. We ignore valid bit, tag bits, and other control bits when we calculate cache size as they don't hold data or instruction. One of the most important cache configurations is based on the number of cache lines per set. The Dirac mapped cache has only a single cache line in each set. An E-way set associative cache has a E number of cache lines in each set. Fully associative cache has all cache lines in a single set. In other words, on, only one set exists in fully associative cache. This different cache configuration yields different performance characteristics, which we will discuss later. Let's talk about how cache organization comes into play when accessing it. CPU issues a memory address to access memory, and the memory address is decomposed into three, three different fields. From the least significant bit, certain number of bits are block offset, and the next certain number of bits are set index bits, and the rest of bits are tag bits. The number of bits for each field is determined by the cache configuration and size. When accessing cache, first, set index bits are used to locate the target set. Next, once the target set is known, then we check if any cache line has a matching tag and its valid bit is set. If both are yes, it's a cache hit. Otherwise, it's a cache miss, meaning the cache doesn't have data or instruction of that address. In case of cache hit, the last step is to use block offset bits to locate the data in the cache line. Let's take a deeper look. First, the Dirac mapped cache, which has only a single cache line per set. First, we locate the target set using middle set index bits. Next, we compare tag bits between the cache line and memory address. If they match and valid bit is 1, it's a cache hit. In this case, in this cache configuration, we need only one comparison of tag bits as there is only a single cache line. In case of cache hit, the last and final step is to locate the data or instruction using the block offset bits. Assuming the data being requested is an integer of 4 bytes, we read the 4 bytes from the location that block offset points. In this case, the block offset is 100, which is 4 in decimal. In case of cache miss, this cache line is evicted and replaced with a new line from the low level memory hierarchy. What about E way set associative cache? Only a different only a difference from direct mapped cache is the second step. Again, first we use a set index bits to locate the target set. Next, we compare tag bits between cache lines, multiple cache lines in this case in this cache configuration and memory address. If we find a cache line that has a matching tag 
and its valid bid is 1, it's a cache hit. In this example, cache configuration of 2A, we need a two comparisons of tag bits as there are two cache lines in each set. In case of cache hit, the final step is to locate the data or instruction using the block offset. Assuming the data being requested is a short integer of 2 bytes, we read the 2 bytes from the location that block offset bits point. In this case, the block offset is again 100, which is 4 in decimal. In case of cache miss, this cache line is evicted and replaced with the, line, with the new line from the low-level memory hierarchy.